Welcome to Mr. Mark's Classroom. My name is Mark Jones, and I'm so glad you joined us for this podcast. I have a great guest for you today, and we're going to be talking about how to publicize your ministry. I know, get the word out. You've got such great stuff going on. Why not get more people involved? I think sometimes we we really overlook or diminish the fact that we need to be doing our outreach, and that means to publicize so more people know and can come be a part of it. Let me introduce you to my guest today. This is uh, Mr. Keith Badgett. Hey, Keith, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me, Mark. Good to see you, bud. It's good to see you, too. Keith and I have a great working uh, history together as we were uh, on, in the state convention and leading camp and uh, other great ministry opportunities. And so I love how he has really gone uh, and done such great things here in Oklahoma as a children's minister, as a family minister, and um, as, as a family man. I mean, he's got three sons, a great wife, and, and really terrific things are happening in your life. So um, I'm really glad you're here today. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Mark. I appreciate what you are doing through Mr. Mark's classroom and serving people across the nation, man. I appreciate it, brother. Oh, cool. Well, hey, we're going to talk about publicizing uh, your ministry. I was asked I had asked Keith if he would speak at a gathering we had with our children's ministers earlier this year, and man, he hit it out of the park with some great information. He also was a speaker at our, at our Sharpen conference, and I thought you would gain so much if you could get just a few nuggets of information from him today. So Keith, why don't you walk us through what it is to publicize your ministry? Yeah, sure thing. Um, publicizing your ministry can be uh, easy for some people and difficult for others. For me, it's relatively easy. I would consider myself a, an extrovert where I like to Talk. get behind a microphone or, or, or even on social media, that, that kind of seems easy for me. But for others, it's very difficult. So um, I, I want to break down into uh, marketing your ministry as something that actually has some spiritual context to it because Jesus was uh, a master promoter. Um, but I want to focus on five different things, five different questions you can ask to excel your ministry uh, in marketing, and then five different areas you have got to be marketing your ministry in. Perfect. Um, Seth Godin, he's kind of a marketing guru in his book. It says, uh, what to do when it's your turn. And by the way, it's always your turn. It's a really long title, but an excellent book. And, and he quotes, he says, uh, he reminds us that uh, we're walking billboards for our businesses, for our families, and for ourselves. Um, how we advertise ourselves and how do we advertise uh, to ourselves uh, and to those around us. And um, uh, though he comes from a business and, and a uh, worldview that is maybe secular, uh, there's a lot of things to grab from that book. But uh, as ministers, we look to Christ as we um, look for ways to get the word out about our ministry. Um, you know, I have several books by Seth Godin as well. And even though it is kind of about branding and, and about um, uh, like secular type of marketing, man, there's some really up-to-date tools and ideas that he offers that really could change how you think this through, especially if you're starting at, you know, the ground level and you're trying to figure out a first step. Yeah. You look at business branding as a great um, example as to what maybe the church could even learn from, from that. And, um, uh, However, I never want that to supersede. I don't want business ethics and things like that of the world to supersede what Christ did. So I usually start with, with him as our truth. And did he publicize? How, how did he get the word out? Um, you look at Mark 12, uh, and he said the large crowd listened to him with delight. And so when it's your turn to speak in front of your church, do people fear that you're going to ask them just to volunteer? Um, uh, yes, actually they do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I get it, especially VBS. Uh, <laughs> yes. Our camp's time. Um, I, I, when he called the 12 disciples to himself, there wasn't a hesitation. Um, and, and it was enticing to them. Um, it, he always had a call to action, whether that was repentance or giving or uh, what to do or what not to do. And he always had a, a plan of action. Um, was, I agree. And can I just say right there, I think um, that call to action was something that I really learned as well. It's like when you're typing that email to people, what, what do you want them to do? Like your last sentence should be, let me know if you're going to be coming or let me know or sign up here. You know what I mean? Put it at the very end, the last thing, so they'll do it then. You don't want it to get muddied in the middle. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, 
sometimes marketing, people think it's a one-way conversation of getting the word out to people. I think it's actually creating like-mindedness amongst your following. It's, it's creating a tribe or a family. Yeah. Um, and it's trying to multiply because as full-time, part-time, or even volunteer, you're the one thinking about your ministry all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to take your mind and give it to others. And it just doesn't happen in, in one email, one video, one text, one blurb. Mm-hmm. It's a constant flow of, uh, of a conversation of creating like-mindedness amongst those who follow your ministry. I agree. Yeah. So I think, I I think to tribe do. is a great word. I mean, yeah. we're kind of gathering our tribe. I remember at VBS this year, I was like, saw some of my workers, leaders, and I was like, come on, let's, let's take a picture together. And we took a selfie and they were like, yes. I mean, it was like this inclusion was like glue. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're trying to multiply your mind, your words, your vocabulary. Mm-hmm. And when you start hearing people um, say those words of vocabulary, to maybe kids, their parents or parents to other parents as they are your best recruiters for your, your ministry. Mm-hmm. That's when you know your marketing is taking root in the hearts and minds of people. Yes. Yep. yes. So, I like that. So go. where do you start? I've got five questions here. I want everybody to start with when marketing your ministry. Okay. Let's start with them. What's the first one? I've got a, I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint here. And it'll uh, give you guys just some information that'll hopefully be helpful. Here's the quote by Seth Godin I mentioned earlier. Marketing is a contest for people's attention. And uh, that's from his book, What to Do When It's Your Turn. And he's making a case in his book. By the way, it's always your turn. So right. here are the five questions I want you to regularly ask. In a world of communication, by the way, our world is highly communicated with. And in the noise of communication, how do you insert what's important to you into the hearts and minds and even the eyes of the world around you. Uh, The first question is, who is your audience? Uh, What's the age of your audience? Are you a younger church medium uh, or or younger church family? Uh, Is the, what's the gender? Is this a men's ministry outing, a women's ministry outing? Uh, The the location of your folks. Um, uh, are, Are you guys in a rural setting or an urban setting? Uh, the social class, are you guys blue collar, white collar, no collar? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your, your church because that will dictate who your audience is and how you communicate. Target. You want to target them better. Yeah. Know yeah, the yeah. audience. So the most important thing is recognize your, uh, your audience. Uh, the second thing is how does my audience want inf- the information? Um, do they want it uh, as a mailer? Uh, do they want it as a text message, an email? Uh, is your bulletin something people look at or do they just use it to put their gum in the corner and fan themselves? (laughs) Uh, um, uh, Where to get their information, bulletin boards, social media, D, all of the above. All the above, right. So uh, one thing we did at our church that I proved helpful was we surveyed uh, all of our parents and this gave me an understanding how they wanted to receive information. Wow. Good idea. Yeah, so there's many surveys uh, out there. I I use Google Drive and I use forms uh, to to do that. Uh, I would encourage people to, whether it be paper and pencil, uh, a show of hands in a meeting, um, survey your folks and see how they want information and then do it that way every time. Good, good idea. Yeah. The next one is what is the irreducible minimum amount of information? Okay, Uh, tell us what that is. What I mean by that is in Twitter, you only have so many characters to convey your thoughts and people are working in a Twitter sphere world. Right. They are desiring things that we used to, we, we would convey in five minutes. They want it in a minute or it used to be in a minute. They want it in 30 seconds or, or in a few characters. So w- looking at your text, let's say for instance, your bulletin on a Sunday, uh, you need your meeting time. You need your meeting place. You need, Who's, who's it attending, who's it for, and then maybe where to RSVP. Instead of, dearly beloved, we, we need you right. in this room on this day and time if the Lord is drawing you. And, <laughs> and I'm saying you, you just need to bullet point that stuff. So, You're right. Um, it almost has to be scannable. I mean, even your emails, it yeah. needs to be more scannable. Bullets, underline the first couple of words. I mean, scannable. 
Even on long texts, uh, maybe you do this, people say 10 ways to be a better dad. And I don't actually read all the paragraphs. I read the bold 10 points. 10 ways, exactly. And yeah. in your ministry, do the same thing. Um, make your substance clear and concise. Minimalize the, vid- the, the, the visual clutter. That, that helps. You know, I think, I think we, it's the same as when we screen phone calls to see if this is something we want to deal with. Mm-hmm. It's like scanning the written that we're screening it. Is this something I really want to read now? So yeah. it has to be screenable. Another thing is if everything has three to four to five exclamation marks and it says read now and everything you send out says that, <laughs> yeah. people are going to stop trusting your printed material right. and your emails. So right. make right. sure that if that is the case, you do that few and far between. Mm-hmm. So Good, good, good uh, information. I like that. Yeah. Well, number four is how often do I need to communicate with my audience? Uh, this varies for people and it varies per avenue of communication. For instance, people can take in a higher volume of information on Facebook or Twitter. They have a uh, lesser tolerance for so many emails that they just kind of get in click mode of delete, 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 delete. Um, in the bulletin, they want one or two points. So depending on your communication avenue, will depend on the volume in which you communicate. And there's a magic number. Is it once a month? Is it once a week? Is it at once or, or a couple of times per, per day? You don't want that uh, student pastor who sends out like four texts a day because of camp and, and t-shirts and this lunch. And like, you don't, you don't want that in, in your uh, text inbox. It's a little much uh, overload. But uh, yeah. So analyze the volume in which you communicate with your people. The next one is, when is my audience most likely to listen? I did a little research on this, and I looked up specifically in one avenue, uh, uh, Facebook. I wanted to see when the highest volumes of traffic were. And uh, according to their website, the three biggest uh, usage spikes, uh, this is Eastern Standard Time, so uh, not here in Oklahoma where, where we're at, but uh, um, they, they tracked time as 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m., and 8, p- 8 p.m. So I have a couple of hypotheses as to why those times yeah. were yeah okay imagine lunchtime you're about to jump out to lunch and i think that there's a spike uh in the workforce um maybe even in amongst students um at three o'clock you got a mass quantity of people sitting in line to pick up their kids at school <laughs> ah yes that's one thinking yes um and then 8 p.m., you put the kids down to bed, and finally, you just check out, and you're scrolling. <laughs> yes. You know? So if you are planning uh, social media, uh, maybe those spike times, those peak hours of traffic, that may be worth a shot to get higher hits for your, your And even uh, though you said that was Eastern time, I mean, I think it just kind of the way it fits in your day, 11, 3, 8. Those are, that's good information right there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, check this out because that's just Facebook. When do people want text messages? Uh, when do people want uh, uh, things in the mail? Uh, let's say your date for an event is on a Monday. Do they want something in their mail on a Saturday, or just a couple of days before, or an entire week before that previous Monday? So timing is equally important. So wow. Yes. After teaching this one time, I developed kind of a bonus question here. Uh, because in my personal context, I learned something new recently. Uh, what is my tone? So here's an extra credit question. Uh, <laughs> you can be misconveyed in text message. I've had that happen really recently in, in relationships where I text something and they immediately like get angry and I pick up the phone and I call and I kind of diffuse the situation because a simple text message in my tone was misinterpreted. Um, that can happen in a lot of media else, you know, sources. So, Video, uh, facial expressions, tone of voice, audio, those things really help with, with tone. Yeah, no kidding. I think, I think it's so hard to build in tone. It doesn't matter how many emojis you have, <laughs> you know, whenever you're texting or typing yeah. something. that is yeah. not the same as hearing your voice, and it, which often communicates your heart. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful. Are these the words that are clear and, uh, and do they have a negative tone of any, any sort? 
You know, it's very, very true. Even getting up in front of your church, uh, doing the announcements, um, you don't want your face to convey one thing and then your word to convey joy <laughs> and your face to look like yeah. you're angry. Uh, you, yeah. you want the two to be synonymous and have a positive tone in light of communicating things about your ministry. Yeah, we need to pay attention to that. Good, good extra credit, I'm going to say. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so what do you got next? All right, so where do you start? Uh, somebody who's uh, maybe analyzing their existing communication strategy or they're breaking ground on brand new stuff. Here's the five places I personally believe you've got to be uh, integrating your communication. These are the lines of communication to your following, your tribe, your village, your people. Um, and, and this can get overwhelming to some people. How do I manage all of this? So kind of talk us through it. Sure. I, I, I'm going to list these five. These are in order of, if you remember, I, I uh, sent a survey out to my own church and mm -hmm. uh, we have a church of about a, a thousand or 1100. Uh, and, and I uh, surveyed all of our parents and this is what they ranked as highest in desire for how to get uh, communication. So the first was Facebook. Um, we'll talk a little bit here about uh, having a group, a Facebook group versus a, a Facebook page. We'll dissect that here in a second. Okay. The second was texting. They want it straight to their phone. Um, and I've got a couple of tips that'll help increase um, uh, uh, that call to action via texting with hyperlinks, bit.ly, uh, hyperlinks and things like that. So okay. the third is your website. Um, this can make or break people's interest in your church without stepping in the front door. Um, what are you conveying on your website? Uh, this, the fourth is email. It still has a valuable place uh, because people are um, uh, wanting it via email. Uh, so you need to get it to them in that direction. The most expensive but still has its place is print. Uh, things like your publications on a Sunday or a Wednesday, things like mailers, things like uh, flyers that go home, things like that uh, also have its place. But I want to break down I, I think the print thing, like your overview of the whole year, here are the dates that are going to happen this school year. So they have something. I've even created something like that and had little circles in each corner. It said place magnet here. So yes. they should put it on their, <laughs> their refrigerator. They needed like, something posted for the year, but yep. you know, in a print form. Two things about that. The first is it's got to have stay power. I love that idea of, is this refrigerator worthy? Is this mom's day timer worthy? Yeah. Um, is this going on the clip board in the, the homeschool room or, or mom and dad's priority list with the calendar? Cause it's got to wedge its way in. And does right. it have stay power? And then the second thing is something as simple as making it cardstock that really increases the life of that piece. Oh, good call. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the first is Facebook. I want to check this out. This is my, my church, First Baptist Church Jinx. And feel free to like us on Facebook. But the purpose in bringing this up is it is different. People often use as synonyms groups and pages. I'm here to clarify they're different and they have different purposes. Good. Our church, all the people that attend our church are welcome to like our page. The page is going to be uh, more centered on getting the word out to uh, your tribe and your following, but also um, towards getting new subscribers. Think of it as a magazine. Uh, think of it as, um, uh, hey guys, here's an event in our community. Whether you go to our church or not, our page is here to get this word out to you. Okay. Um, it almost so, serves as kind of a website in itself. Correct. Correct. Uh, yeah, you can advertise, you can create an event to, to get it out to your community. Um, you can even boost your post with very minimal dollars. You're right. And uh, that is very, very helpful because in Facebook, they have done what nobody else has been able to do. And that is by zip code, by gender, by profession, all these statistics that people give freely to Facebook. You can target an audience by school zone, by interest. If it's a mops group, you can target ladies with young children and, and they want to be contacted in that direction. So they've teed it up for you with a, a very minimal cost. Yeah, that's true. Yep. 
I spent $300 in publications for uh, our summer, all of our summer stuff. And um, we got over 6,000, maybe even closer to 10,000. I had to have to go back and look at the analytics, but tons of hits just in our community, reaching new people. Yeah, I, you know, I also paid for Mr. Mark's Classroom page on Facebook and um, I, I mean to boost it uh, when I put up like 40 vacation Bible school decoration ideas and I was amazed that I reached uh, 98,000 people uh, with it and people were so appreciative to get some ideas so you can do that so quickly and easily and affordable. Yeah, it is. And there's a difference between reaching them, them seeing it. And then the second day track is interactions with it. Somebody that clicks on it and wants to know more. It's very, very helpful. Yeah. And so you get that immediate report. How many people clicked? How many people are looking at it? Yep. Nice. I agree. So again, that is a Facebook page. This is a a view of my children's group. If you notice in the top left-hand corner, it says it is a closed group, but also that little lock is unlocked. A closed group means, uh, imagine a room with a door, and uh, the, the door is, is locked, and if somebody wants in the door, I have to go to the door and accept them in and then close it behind them. If it is an open group, that means the door is open and anybody can walk in, anybody can walk out. In your Facebook group, if, if it is a closed group, people can request to be a part of it, and only the administrators can let them in. That way, unwelcome people are not allowed. Good. The little lock there on the left-hand side you can either have it searchable or unsearchable. People can find it in the, in the search bar, top left-hand corner. People can search and find it just by typing in FBC Jinx Kids. If it's locked, that means it's a secret group and people cannot even search to find it. That may be helpful for having a group page for volunteers, which I, I do that. It's not, un, it's not searchable by the outside. It's just something that we use as an yeah. internal group. Yeah, because you can invite all of them with the exact name and they can find it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. what sets us apart from the page is you look uh, right where you're about to it says write something right above there it says add photo and video you can do that in a page but you cannot add a file uh, in a page you can only add files in a group Um, if you click that button more it would also show you some additional tools that are only in a Facebook group Mm -hmm. Um, this is also helpful our church context we have a lot of foster care children pictures on the internet of foster children is not welcomed. However, if I have a closed group and only foster care parents are in that group, uh, I I easily can upload safe videos and safe photos and and all those I invite can see them. That's nice. That's really great. And you know people, they they wanna see pictures of their kids (laughs) and when they can go there, they can save those pictures to their own uh, uh, camera roll and uh, be able to keep them whenever yeah. somebody else took a great pic of their kid. Yep, yeah, I agree. So there's a lot of uh, a good following. People can set notifications to every time you upload something, they get a they get a reminder and they click right in, and you have your own little tribe, your own little, little group yeah. all together. Now again, different than a page. A great way to nurture your tribe. Good. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So the next one is a paid texting service versus a free texting service. The one I have on the window now is a paid texting service. There are hundreds of them out there, a lot of research done. Uh, This particular one I landed on, um, it's not very well known, but it's called Your Mobile Church. You can Google them and find them out. But what I liked about this is you can uh, create small subgroups. People can opt in by texting a keyword to these uh, numbers. For example, ours is 59769. And that is given to us. We have a keyword FBCJ for F- First Baptist Church Jinx kids, and they text that to that number. They get an automatic reply. Uh, currently, we'll have 200 users, and I can send out a text message uh, to them. Um, there are subgroups. There's scheduling out texts. There's uh, uh, that's nice. Yeah, you can edit groups. You can do statistics. Again, this is a paid service. Um, one thing. Can I to ask do- how much it costs. Yes. Uh, one thing to be aware of is monthly service fees. Um, you can do, we don't do the monthly service fees. I like the bucket of text messages. We'll get 10,000 text messages for $129, $159. I forget what it is, but that's the, the cost we're looking at. What goes with the monthly the services, month. uh-huh. what, what goes with the monthly service fees is sometimes if you don't use it, you lose it. And uh, I didn't care for that much. So. Oh, okay. 
good. I like that, Keith. Good. There are plenty of free uh, apps that you can use. Group Me is is one. There's a Group Text. Uh, there, there's others that the school systems have been uh, using as well uh, for nonprofits. Uh, those would be free for you to do straight from your cell phone. Um, anything web based, you could also do from your cell phone. This paid service, I can do that. But yeah, we need to be able to do it from our cell phone because it hits you at, while you're waiting in line at the school. That's exactly right. And uh, so uh, if your church is on a tight budget, uh, look into some of those free ones I just mentioned. Again, Group Me is one. Group Text is another. Um, and uh, simply research that online as to free texting services because they're out there and they still pack a punch. They still do a great job. I utilize that for my volunteers yeah. on a smaller scale. That's good. Mm -hmm. Very good, actually. So, um, the, the fourth one I mentioned is our website. If, uh, if you're, this is a, a snapshot of our website recently overhauled for uh, our kids' ministry. And that's wow. a picture of, is uh, that your church? That is our adventure land. That is a new build for us. So Holy moly. I know. I love it. This has been a beautiful outreach to our community birthday parties. We have like two birthday parties every year. Within the first year, we had 52, like one a weekend, uh, <laughs> birthday parties. Um, oh, wow. So people stepped foot into our church that ha would not have attended. Um, That's cool. It's really, really neat. So yes. this is real captivating. This is the message we want to show is that we serve, we don't serve a boring God. Uh, this is our first picture. We also have a special needs ministry. That's the second picture. You can't see it scrolling here, but, and then uh, events and activities in our church. Uh, this was kind of a costly undertaking, but this was an important one for us. Well worth it. Absolutely. Your website is the newspaper, Facebook, text messaging, email is the paper boy. Uh, they're, they're throwing it to people's doorsteps in, mm. in different fashions. So you want your newspaper, you want your website to really communicate clearly uh, your ministry. That is an excellent analogy. We really do need to get everything in order so we can distribute. Because you don't want to start handing it out as fast as you can and it looks bad or boring or anything yeah. worse than, than that. So, yeah. Have you ever printed just like a thousand of something? And then after you get it off the printer, you're going, oh, no, there's a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> it's it happens to you. Not all the time, but it happens. Um, yeah. The good thing about your website is that you can uh, edit that quickly. So this is, this is going to be the most costly thing if you're going to overhaul. But oftentimes, it's just uh, a need to edit. Um, something I want to show you here is your website. It's almost an industry standard now. This is a picture of what it should look like on your mobile device. Yes. Um, all websites uh, require, uh, it's called a reactionary website. And you need a reactionary website that um, looks good on three interfaces. That's the, your desktop, your iPads or your tablets, and your cellular devices. because a lot of your traffic is going to be on those other two, not just your traditional. Right. Uh, I think mobile devices are probably utilized the most. Yeah. So yep. you want it to look good there. I agree. So this particular one changes from, if you remember on the large screen, I had my uh, toolbar all across where it says staff, community, preschool, kids, and it's all visible in one look. If you're on a cell phone, uh, it now becomes a drop down menu. So it's concise. And our web the web workers really made it look crisp. I'm proud of it. Yeah, I am too. That looks great. Um, the, the next two I don't have a slide for, but the, we have email and then printed information. Okay. Um, what would be the, if people were to pull up just any one of your emails, is there consistency? Do you have your kids ministry logo at the top center? Um, is it in your signature? Do you have a, a, a tag statement for your ministry, a purpose statement? For us, it's uh, because kids matter. And that's on every signature of my email. So there's continuity, there's an expectation of, uh, oh, visually, there's a, I recognize where this is from. Um, there's something called eye atrophy, uh, where you just read and read and read, and then you just stop reading, and then you give up and you exit. Um, going back to the Twitter sphere uh, that we live in, Make sure that things are concise. Take your three sentences, make them one, 
and uh, take out words that are uh, fluff and make it um, uh, a tweet, make it as concise as you can. Right. Oftentimes images uh, still uh, speak a thousand words and that can be helpful as well. So um, if you're including hyperlinks, Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that y you test those emails and those hyperlinks out. There's nothing worse than sending one out and everybody replies back and says, Hey, the hyperlink doesn't work. So yes, I, I hate that. Testimony there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> one service on hyperlinks. This is good for both printed and texting is you need to get a tiny URL service. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen those hyperlinks that are like this long? Yeah. You need to create them to where visually they are this long. That way they take up less character space in your print and in your text messages. Two mm -hmm. services that I recommend would be bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, uh, bit, bit, B-I-T dot com, and you can create a username, password. You drop in your hyperlinks. You can even customize them all for free and so keep it, track of all so of it's your... B-I-T-L-Y dot com, bit.ly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. second one is tiny, U-R-L, T-I-N-Y, U-R-L dot com. It does the same exact thing and uh, username, password protected, and you can create all of your ministry URLs. That way people can see, let's say you have a Wednesday night program. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, let's say you do a WANA, a WANA 2017. There you are. Click that. Or uh, um, if you have Bible skills, drills, and thrills, it's Bible B, uh, skills S, D, drill. You know, you could, you could abbreviate your your uh, uh, URL and make it little. Very good. I have actually used the hyperlink in Word, you know, and created the message in Word and clicked, uh, you know, the, you highlight it, hit the hyperlink and tell it like instead of, it just said um, register now, but actually it created an email to come to me and it filled it in because yeah. I could tell it what to do. So it's pretty easy and it's right there. Uh, just, you know, ask a child to help you do it the first time and you'll be good. Just hand your publication so to a preteen and they'll take it all over. They're for so you. smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last is printed information and we'll be finished. And that is, uh, it doesn't have to be full color. Oftentimes two colors would be great or even just black and white is, is crisp enough. And that's also cost effective. The bigger the church, the smaller your bulletin needs to be. That's a, people think if I don't get into the bulletin, um, it, it will be missed. And, and I think that's false. I think the larger your church, the more things that there are. What you need to do is make your, your bulletin uh, or your printed material smaller and then tell them where to go get concise information, whether that be in your space, online. Um, so that is, again, a personal practice of mine. Um, does this help or hurt my ministry brand? Uh, is your logo that's supposed to be like this? Is it stretched out and wonky? Uh, yeah. Is it pixelated? Oh well, yeah. Proof so, that. Yeah. So print one, make sure that uh, it's crisp around the edges, um, using different formats like a JPEG ping, uh, uh, even a vector file on your t-shirts. Those are getting into more advanced settings, but your publications, it's some, take some study and, uh, and do it right. Excellent. And you know, I think one of the things that I put together was a, a printed booklet uh, that just had some events and some activities in our church, things that we, we do. And I was sure to put big, colorful pictures of our ministry happening mm -hmm. with the kids. Uh, of course, I had to have permission from parents. But once that was there, because people are looking at those photographs and yeah. just a little bit of information. Yeah kind of swinging it the uh, opposite direction. I agree that pictures communicate, especially their kids' pictures communicate. Uh, there's an emotion when you see that. The opposite is also true when I was talking about visual clutter or eye atrophy, is if you click google.com and you go to their homepage, what do you see? You see the word Google, and they kind of create a variety of Google uh, artwork sometimes for their logo, but it always says Google, and then it has the search bar, and then the space all around it is what color? It's white. Yeah, white so space. That white space is super important because it draws your eye to the center. Google has one sole purpose, and that is for people to find what they need in one square. And I think it also communicates easy that here's only the information you need. There's not a lot of clutter. 
Exactly. Um, some people might say, oh, that's just too vanilla, but it, it really has a purpose mm -hmm. and that white space is really valuable. Yep, yep. I agree. Um, sometimes I've seen publication secretaries who say, well, there's too much white space and I need to fill that with, uh, with flowers or doilies or clip art. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> doilies. Did you really say doilies? <laughs> yes, of course. Yep. Um, so you have to go, no, 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 take that off. Take that yeah, off. More is not always better. Uh, just keep it <laughs> simple. And uh, uh, here's the biggest question. I'll leave you with this. Okay. Ask, question, ask the question, what if this wasn't printed? Would anybody miss it? And if the answer is I like that. nobody would miss it, then don't print it. Right. Save yourself the time, the money, and the paper and supplies, and exactly. and figure to put it out how to put it out somewhere else. Very, very good. Hey, I'll let you um, go back and, and uh, change uh, the screen so we're side by side again. And man, I just can't thank you enough for all of this great information. I mean, man, this is fantastic. And we know about Facebook. We know about uh, our printing and stuff, and even our emails. But to realize that the email uh, or the website is like the newspaper. What, what are we delivering? We need to go back and make sure that's exactly what we want it to be. And then how to maybe even utilize a texting service. Those are gonna be great tools that we need to implement right away. And I wanna challenge everybody, look over the list and just choose one of these that you're going to say this month, I'll improve this one. And then next month, I will dive in with this one because it'd be overwhelming to try to take everything on at once. But go ahead and just start the process so you're not overwhelmed and do a little bit at a time. And you probably know people in your church that this is really up their alley, like they live and breathe it. And you could just say, hey, would you come over here and help me set up this texting service and kind of walk me through it? And they can probably say, yeah, but I got a better one here. Let me show you this. And, and yep. it would be so easy, um, but you'll have to like put it on your calendar to actually make that happen. And really, you're going you're gonna to shine mm -hmm. once you get some of these things implemented. Hey, Keith, thank you so much for bringing all of this. This was like gold today. Thank you so much. I yeah. love it. Well, people are welcome to reach out to me. You can reach me at Keith, K-E-I-T-H, at fbcjinx.org. I'd love to serve and help you guys in any way that I can. So that's E before I after K. I before E except in Keith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here today. Everybody, thank you for joining us for this episode of Mr. Mark's Classroom. Hey, we're going to have more great speakers and great information coming up even next week. We want you to come be a part of it. We would like to invite you to go to iTunes and to actually download the podcast at the podcast app and uh, subscribe to Mr. Mark's Classroom so that you can stay in tune and be notified when a new one is published each week. And we wanna ask you if you would put us, uh, give us a rating so that other people can see the activity and be aware of it so they would come and be a part of it. We wanna say thank you for all you do in kids ministry. Your life in kids ministry is a gift. So go and make it count.